Hi, today is Maundy Thursday. It is a night that is dark and um, different than a lot of services that we do in the church. So many of our services are geared towards celebrating the resurrected Christ. And while I'll never stop celebrating the resurrected Christ, tonight we walk the steps of Jesus, um, eat the food of Jesus, share the cup of Jesus, and experience what the disciples did that last night that they spent with Jesus before he was arrested. So Maundy means commandment. It is a night that we remember that commandment, that last night that Jesus spent with his disciples, what he gave them was a new commandment to love one another. So we're gonna be in scripture tonight and we're also going to be sharing um, the bread and the cup. We're going to be sharing in communion and I hope that you have the supplies that you need at home. One of the things that we talked about uh, as we've done communion online these last few weeks, this is a little different, but we are just letting you know that you can grab whatever bread that you have on hand, um, crackers, you can use a piece of white bread. Uh, I, I have a bagel right here. I just wanted to make sure that it was very clear that whatever bread you have on hand is perfectly acceptable. I know last week some, some folks decided to um, celebrate by making the uh, bread challah. Uh, and so it was a beautiful way to, to celebrate a Jewish tradition um, with a Jewish recipe. Um, and so I hope that you in some way have uh, drawn close to these scriptures in new ways. And that's just one of the ways that you can do it. But for tonight, you can use whatever you have in the house. Uh, you also need to have some kind of liquid, uh, preferably grape juice, just because that's our tradition. Uh, so staying true to tradi tradition, but you are welcome to use whatever you have. Um, you can use water or soda, uh, whatever you have. Uh, so we're going to go into the scripture tonight and talk, talk about Jesus. And then we're going to break bread together, even though we are um, in a virtual world right now. <clears throat> so right now we are in um, the Gospel of John. So one of the things that Reverend Patty and I put out this week was the scriptures for Holy Week. And I hope that you have been reading those, uh, asking yourself some questions, talking to other people about it. I gathered online um, with some friends yesterday to talk about one of the scriptures and it just challenged me to be thinking about it and praying about it throughout the day and, and uh, address that with other people. And, and so it's just a great way to, to make sure that you are taking the time to walk the steps that Jesus walked that last week before he was crucified and then resurrection, resurrected. It makes the Easter experience, that big Sunday where we're so excited and so joyful, that much more uh, beautiful and that much more meaningful when we have gone through these other holy days of experiencing the emotion that went into uh, Jesus's path to the cross. So tonight um, we are in John 13 and we're starting in verse 1 and I'm going all the way to 17. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that this time, that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. 
Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So the interesting thing about um, this meal that they were sharing, in the other Gospels, they go into that uh, Passover meal. Uh, John is the only one that doesn't describe it as a Passover meal. Um, This last meal that he was sharing with his disciples... He knew that Judas had been prompted by Satan. He knew that he would be betrayed by Judas. And yet he still offered him the bread and the cup. He still, knowing that he was not clean, in that um, scripture he says to him, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. And there he was pointing out Judas, but yet he still washed his feet and dried them with a towel. The word that comes to mind in this is humility. The strength that it takes to be humble and serve one another, to remove your pride, our arrogance, our self-serving motivations. Those are supernatural Things, supernatural inspiration, supernatural strength that gives us the ability to rise above our own needs and serve other people first. Jesus set the example for us, set the example for how we were to love one another and serve one another. And on this Maundy Thursday night, whether we are gathered in person or not, what I want our people to hear is that the, the prompting, the teaching of Jesus to serve one another can still happen in the midst of COVID-19. We can still find ways to be self-sacrificing, to practice servant leadership, to find ways to serve one another, to wash each other's feet, I don't know if you've ever experienced a foot washing. Uh, The first one that I experienced, I was a youth leader at a retreat. And I didn't know that they were going to do a foot washing. So let's just say that I was not pedicure ready. Um, I hadn't been planning on anyone seeing or especially touching my feet. Um, I had been in little tennis shoes. It was summertime. It was in July in South Louisiana, and I was in little tennis shoes that I had been wearing. This is kind of gross, but okay. I had been wearing these shoes all day without socks on. And then I'm told right before I go into this thing that my feet are going to be washed. So initially, there's all of the um, the vanity and the uh, embarrassment and all those things about like someone is about to wash my stinky feet and I'm not okay with this. It makes me very uncomfortable. I don't like it. And so they bring you in and they washed my feet. No one said anything about them, but um, they washed my dirty feet. The vulnerability of that moment, the vulnerability of acknowledging that I was not my cleanest self um, or my prettiest self or um, the way that I would have wanted anyone to touch my feet, um, that moment offered for me uh, 
a huge opportunity to lean into God's plan for humility, to let go of the things uh, that stop us from allowing people to be close to us, that stop us from allowing people to serve us how they want to serve us. And it was a huge lesson for me in the kind of leadership that I wanted to work in. Now, I fail at that all the time. Humility is not always my greatest strength. I am a can-do person and want to do it my way, and um, that's a struggle for me. But I still look back to that night where a group of teenagers poured water on my dirty, stinky feet and washed them and dried them and put lotion on them and then held my hand and and escorted me out of the room. It brought me to tears to think of Jesus doing that same thing for his disciples. It brought me to tears to picture how much dirtier their feet were than mine and their sandals and the dirt that would have been caked on it from the streets. And yet Jesus, King of King and Lord of Lords, knelt down with a towel, soaked their feet and washed them and dried them off with his towel, making sure that they understood that his love for them was so pure that he came to serve them. So humility brings us to something that is practiced in the United Methodist Church before we receive communion. Now, those of you that come to the table, we don't actually do this part of the communion liturgy. Um, we usually bless sacraments, and I talk about it, and, we, and then we celebrate communion together. But this part of the liturgy, I think, is important, especially for tonight. So I I just want you to hear this, um, and I'm going to invite you that I'm going to say certain parts, and I'm going to pause, and I'm going to invite you to say the words after me. So repeat after me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That confession and pardon is... um, part of the liturgy that when I first started going to church and we would say that part of the communion liturgy, uh, I, I, it made me a little uncomfortable. Uh, one, as a, as a new believer, uh, seeing things like we have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, we have not heard the cry of the need, needy, uh, made me feel a little like, how do you know that I haven't been doing that? <laughs> It made me feel a little indignant. Um, It also made me feel judged because I was immature in my faith and I hadn't quite understood what the purpose of this was. Uh, We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. If we think back to all the different ways that we could have chosen God and chose our own way instead, this is not loving God with our whole heart. When we choose ourselves over other people, we have not loved God with our whole heart. When we are judgmental, when we are stingy or greedy, when we are racist, when we are hateful, when we are hurtful, we have not loved God with our whole heart. 
These are all the things that happen within our hearts as humans. And this confession is an acknowledgement that we have not allowed God to perfect us in his image. So that last part where it says, free us for joyful obedience. This is, this is the prayer of communion, that our obedience to God leads us into deeper love with God and therefore deeper love of God's people. So tonight, as we go into our communion, I hope that if you are gathered at home on your own, that you have gotten these elements uh, and that you are ready. And if you are with your family or whoever you are quarantined with, that you will take the time to make sure you do this together as well. We tend to, you know, use beautiful things to create an ambiance around worship, but that is not a necessity for what you're doing here tonight. The purpose of tonight is to gather around a table and to remember this meal, to remember the foot washing and to remember the grace of Jesus Christ. So the last part um, of today's scripture reading, we read through 17 and uh, through uh, 13, one through 17. And now the second part that they have assigned for this week is um, you jump all the way over to 1334, where Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The table is the great equalizer. It is the place that we can all come to, no matter how broken we are, and we can hold our hands out and receive the gift of grace. So as we go into this communion meal, I hope that you will take the time to pray, to seek forgiveness, and to walk forward with open hands, extended forward, looking for a gift from God. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for the gift of a shared table. Though we are not in person, Lord, we're so thankful that we can gather online. God, we ask that um, even though we are apart, that you are uniting us through your Holy Spirit as a body of Christ. And Lord, I ask that you bless these gifts of bread and wine, that you make them the body and blood of Christ so they might transform us from the inside out. And Lord, for every person who is gathered around different tables, picnic tables, dinner tables, coffee tables, I just ask that you pour your Holy Spirit out on these gifts of bread and juice or water or wine, whatever it is that people have, that you will bless them, that your Holy Spirit will pour out on them so that as they, they receive these elements, they will be transformed by your Spirit as well. And we ask all of these things, Lord, in your holy name. Amen. So on this night that Jesus shared with his disciples, this night that they gathered, this night where Jesus knew that he would be betrayed, but still he took the time to sit and share a meal with these men, these brothers, these best friends. And as they sat at the table, Jesus took the bread and he offered it to them and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he offered it to them and he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This was a new covenant, a new promise for God's people. He said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So with that, I'm going to invite you to pause the video for just a moment while you share in communion in your homes.
So with that, God's people, may you be blessed. May you experience holiness this night in a night in a way that you have never experienced it before. In the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup, may you experience the Holy Spirit in a way that trans transforms you so that you can do the transformation of the world with Jesus. That last thing that Jesus said in our scripture tonight where he said a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. My friends, go in peace. Let you show the love of Jesus to the world. Let you be marked as a disciple by how you live and how you love. And now, as we close for this evening, may you receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his own countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Be blessed.